Welcome to Locksmith Late. I believe this is number 10. And we have a special guest with us. One might say he's a movie star. One might say he's famous. One might say he is the epiphany or the embodiment of the current generation of locksmiths. I relate a lot with this guest. He's young. He has kind of a mysterious past. And whenever you look at him, you might say, hmm, let's let's kind of bring in our our co-host real quick, Eric. Eric, how are you? What's up, man? I'm good. How's my audio? Good. Clear. Good? Awesome. Yeah. What do you know about our guest? Anything in particular? Not really. I live in he's from New York. Got a New little York locksmith. Going on. He's a locksmith. Movie? Let's bring in George, a.k.a. Geo, the locksmith. Hey. How's it going? How you doing, guys? Good, good. I'm good. How do you pronounce your last name? Abramian. One more time. Abramian. Abramian? Yeah, Abramian. Like Abraham Lincoln Abramian. Uh-huh. That's tough. I used to call you George Abraham, but I, I whenever yeah, I was... I guess it comes for the same... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was filling out the uh, the title, I was like, "Damn, I have no idea how to how to pronounce his name." Yeah. So, George, you're from what city in New uh, York? Uh, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So, how many people are in your area? As a locksmith? Yeah, like your service <laughs> area includes how many people? Would you say? Oh, like uh, people wise, ten million. God damn. In Brooklyn, uh, ten, in Brooklyn only. Do you service any of the other bur- uh Yes, boroughs. They call boroughs. boroughs. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a Staten Island, Queens, Bronx, and Manhattan. I try not to go to Bronx. It's a little far. Queens sometimes. Staten Island all the time. So it's a lot of people, bro. So I, I go to Manhattan sometimes. Manhattan is different game. It's a uh, traffic and you lose a lot of time. It's usually two guys in the van. Somebody's park looking for parking, and another one is doing the job because by the time you find the parking, it might take like an hour. See, I wanted to bring that up. Um, you are like me. You're not afraid to use different methods of entry and you know any tool that you can use, you utilize. Um, you caught some shit once in a post I saw where you used an airbag on an apartment complex door yes. and pe- people were like oh well, you're a fucking scammer and you said something that i really like you're like fuck you i have to park like an hour away in new york city sometimes i have to park like nine blocks away so i'd rather get in instead of making another trip you know what i mean correct and i double parked the car it was my account the key wasn't working the lock wasn't working i saw a space why do I have to drill the lock? I pumped it and it opened up. It saved me time. And then all of a sudden, everything started working. Yeah. I mean, it's like these people who probably were criticizing you are probably they like me, know you know. They yeah, know. they don't know. They don't know what you're coming up against. Uh, shit. I don't have to walk 19 blocks to a job. You know what I mean? So no. I, rem- I don't have yeah. to walk 19 blocks, but I have to do look for parking sometimes for 20 30 minutes and uh, imagine you park and they tell you it's a dead bull you come up and it is some different kind of dead bull that i don't know like there's a jimmy dead bull there's a tubular dead bull there's a mortis locks in new york there's so many dead bulls in new york city it's not just one dead bull like in every other state i worked in florida for like two years i know how other states are it's basically where you have in Home Depot, that's what's residential. Like uh-huh. dead bulls, doorknobs, that's it. Not in New York. You got motor slug, different back sets, different trim. It's so much stuff. It's like, it's crazy. You're walking up to a job and now you got to go down to the van. You took the elevator. It's so much. It's like too much, you know? It's a completely different animal than what I'm used to. Yeah, it's, like, it's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. In Florida, sometimes I used to go in the flip flops. So, uh, yeah, because I'm in the van. I'm working in the van. I took the lock off. I'm breaking. 
in New York is like <laughs> it takes time. There's a lot of companies that have two guys. What's your average drive time to a job? Eric, like he's in Virginia and he can go like nine miles. It'll take 45 minutes. Me, if I go 45 minutes on the highway, I go 45 miles. You know what I mean? I might, I might have two mile job and drive 30 minutes. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, there is no like highway driving 90 miles an hour, or 80 miles. No, it's 25. And if you go more than 25, they take a picture. And they send it to you. Drive thirty, like it's crazy. It's they. The city is really like it makes it hard for us. So talk about what you come up against. Um, you deal with a lot of multi lock on yes. residential unlocks. Yeah. So it's most. Uh, let's say compared to you, your guys' cities. Um, let's say you go on a floor, a complex, and there's ten doors. There's probably six multi locks and three schleck there's yeah. more multi love than anything else you so come across been, a lot of uh medico and stuff like that so as well. medical used to be very popular in the 70s and 80s in new york and then after like 90s multi love took over and the uh, medical is dying because they don't really have no control key you can copy okay. medical. You can trace medical. It's so easy. But with new ones, multi-lock like MT5, you have to have a card to swipe it to cut the key. There's no other way to cut the key. Interesting. So do you do any multi-lock uh, duplication or color Yes, recognition? yes. I have, I have two machines. One of the machines is like 17000 Another mm -hmm. one is like six. It's very expensive. But it, it's pay it pays off, you know. You got a building, they need, let's say, I did a job. They need a 450. This right here, interactive key right there. You see? So yeah. Show one, show show everybody that key. You just showed it to me earlier. It's pretty cool. When I was a lock picker, we used to bid on these things and collect them. My kids, they broke it. I gave it to them to play. I gotta fix it. <laughs> I just I just met a multi lock uh, president of United States of the multi lock came to my shop, bro. Did he? Yeah, it's actually a woman. She came to my shop. She wanted to meet me because they bought a pixel from me. They bought a pixel. They want to know like how come the, what is this stuff? Because I'm picking multi locks. Like, there's not a lot of locksmiths in New York who does that. Oh, like, so they they got a rotor pick from you? Oh yeah, they bought it. Not this time, before, but you know they bought it. Yeah, they definitely bought one. They wanted to know. Yeah, they should. They should. Because I, uh, they should make better locks. That's we we pick them. They should make better. That's how it goes. I I say to people all the time. I wish I could interview uh, engineers at Stratech. You know the people who design door locks for the uh, you know Ford or whatever. Because I would love to ask if you know what you know now. Like the Lishi makes it really easy to pick a high security door lock would you change the design so i imagine multi-lock is doing the same where they're buying the rotor pick that you use to compromise their system systems and they're going to improve and 100%. find ways to defeat it and they want to make another one and that's how yeah the game is. <laughs> yeah that, that's the pair the parallels we travel where they try to keep us out and we try to keep up you know what yeah. i mean so i mean listen yeah. they came to me they have a new system it's like electric strike on top of the door inside uh and they showed me and i shimmed it they're like no way you just shimmed that i was like yeah i was like it's a uh, small plastic so now they're working on something they do need us yeah you understand because they build security we try to break we compromise it yeah we compromise <laughs> it yeah you know yeah. in a good way you know say so it's like a game i guess cat and mouse so you have some social media accounts you you are you're on facebook instagram basically everywhere on facebook what is it you do you have a lot of groups that you admin or do you have just one i don't in particular? care about the groups i'd be honest with you i'm sorry yeah. i don't want to disrespect all the guys in the groups uh why did i open up my own group because i like this few guys you know they're looking at me he's an immigrant he's probably a scammer He's probably with Israelis. He's probably with fucking Russians. He's probably with them. 
I'm not mm. one of those guys. But I am an immigrant. I did came when I was 14. And I am an immigrant, but immigrants build this country too at the same time. So, you know, everybody has a root somewhere. Some people have bad names. In Where are you industry. from? I'm from Republic of Georgia. It used to be part of Soviet Union. I do speak Russian because I had to learn in the school because we were under them. But mm -hmm. we are a much older country. You know, we have our own language, everything, culture, food. Uh, but that's why I opened up a group because they were giving me problems in other groups. So I was like, you know what? Let me just open up my own group. And right now I'm like by myself. Like I can't even manage because I don't really have time. Before I had time, you know, but now I don't have time. I have two kids. I have a business, you know, so I don't know. Yeah. My main thing is the TikTok. It gives me free traffic. It helps me out for my website. It gives a ranking for Google. The more people go on the website, you know, it's better for... For me, like if you Google locksmith in Brooklyn, I come up organically like on the first page. So that helps me out a lot. That's why I started doing it. I did the website myself. I do the marketing myself. I did everything myself. It's all kind of interesting to me. I uh, That's one big thing I neglect is my uh, social media. Everybody tells me TikTok, you know, is the app. Would you agree that TikTok is one of the most productive apps? Yeah. Why is that? It gives you free traffic. How so? So you have account. You post a video. Uh, let's say Alicia video. They think I'm selling it. I'm not selling no Alicia. I'm, so they clicking on my website. They thinking like, oh my God, he's selling it. So they going and checking my website. Google sees that there's people in my website. So it ranks me up. I see. I have five keywords on my website. I'm with the Wolves, who's been in New York City for 40 years, bro. 30 years companies. I opened up GeoLocksmith like five, six years ago. My website is new, and I'm over there with the like big boys. You understand? I'm a one-man show. I have few guys, but I don't know. Well, I uh, want to let, – let's jump into it. So, like, you're from Georgia. You're an immigrant. You came here at, like, 14, you said? Yeah, I went to high school here. I, like, I kind of finished high school here. And then you, you ended up in Florida, and you became uh, a doctor so there. I was in New York, you know, for some time, and I got myself in trouble. Um, I was basically getting deported back to Georgia. Um, and the uh, immigration judge gave me a chance to stay. And my mother, she moved to Florida. And she's like, I want to take him out of from New York. I want to take him to Florida. So when I went to Florida, I found somebody who was a locksmith. And he introduced me to this locksmithing thing. So I started doing locksmithing in Florida. Then I worked for two years in Florida. I went to Houston, Texas. I was like a subcontractor. Let I was me ask young. you about Florida. Yes. Was it a scammer that you worked for or a yes. legitimate shop? Scammers. Scammers. Yeah. See, I want to I want to point this out. A lot of people are, you know, us. A lot of legitimate guys are afraid to admit that they came from a scammer background. Well, of course, I, I didn't know they were scammers. How, how exactly. I, how exactly. I know? They tell me. Yeah. Okay, we give you twenty five percent. You go do a job. Uh, you yeah. Charge this much. I'm like, okay. I'm young. I'm like twenty six. I'm like, sure. I was like, I never made this kind of money in my life. I was mm -hmm. like, sure. So then I realized that it was a scam, of course. Yeah. And I got a job in Old Brooklyn Locksmith. The movie was made of, like, I was looking for somebody like them, like a real American shop with, like, old timers. I was like, I'm tired working for these people because they're like, I charge 185 for a house knockout. They're like, why don't you touch 300? You crazy. I'm like, bro, you crazy? I'm like, like I'm fighting with these <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. think you know I didn't know, but there were scammers, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, they're they're afraid to admit it, but I feel it's important because like it shows like the locksmith industry 
even employees don't even you know they're not even aware sometimes that they're working for a scammer of course, you know what i mean don't. they have yeah. no idea yeah they and know? so then they, they they go to a legitimate shop and they're like oh shit this entire so time i was out, the bad Jerry. guy I yeah. was a locksmith for three years, like two years in Florida. Then I loaded in a little bit in Texas. In Texas, they stole my van. After they found my van, uh, I got in an accident. My back was messed up. So my father is like, listen, come back to New York. Come back to New York. I lost everything. So I came back to New York. I was looking for jobs. And I went into this old school shop. We're going to see the movie right now. And... Uh, when I went there, I was like, oh, my God, these guys are like a real American locksmith. Like, you know, they've been there since 1964. I'm like, oh, shit, I want to learn from them. And I thought I was a locksmith till I walked in there. And I realized that I wasn't locksmith. They are the real, they're like, they were real, you know. So I learned a lot of stuff from them. You were like, a, a, a laxmith at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> One of my favorite insults, laxmith. It pisses uh, <laughs> pisses people off so much. So Eric is going to pull up real quick. Um, we're going to show that Geo was featured in a documentary. We're not going to play it just yet. Geo, tell us about this real quick. Um, so th this happened nine years ago when I got a job there. Matthew was retiring and this guy walked in into the shop and he wanted a film about locksmithing uh, because he liked that what we do, like we enter people's houses as a locksmiths. Like a lot of people don't let them, nobody in their house. So like we see what's going on. So he wanted to show like in New York, the people, different people and the locksmithing. And he saw that he was retiring. I was taking his position. He liked what was going on in the shop. He went around to all to the different shops, and he picked us. So mm -hmm. I got lucky, basically. When I got in there nine years ago, they stopped filming it. While I was getting trade by Matthew, he was leaving in three months, and he was showing me all the accounts that he does because he had, like, 40 or 50 buildings that he was taking care of. He had, like, a big box with the keys with a bunch of building everything on multi-lock so he was just showing me around his tricks his accounts and cameras was just following us around i uh i just watched it for the first time and i gotta say i fucking loved it it was uh <laughs> it was phenomenal like it's cool i think i don't know yeah, i'm looking at it, it after nine years and it kind of worked out because now that I have my shop, in the end, they show my shop, like a kid with my family. So that's Everything. what I wanted to ask. Like, yes. they put you at the end after all that time. Yeah. And I thought that was so fucking beautiful. I was like, I almost cried because it's like Beowulf. <laughs> like, if you've you. ever read, if you ever read Beowulf, it, it begins with the funeral of a king. Okay. And then it ends with the funeral of a king. And it oh. shows that no matter, like, no matter, even in death, like there's a an opportunity for some greatness to Correct. be inspired, Correct. and then even that greatness will be carried and then die, and that will inspire greatness. You know what I mean? And so, like the documentary, nice... I was like, yeah, I was like, it's a parallel. I was like, it's beautiful. You know, Matthew, the brilliant locksmith, you know, is teaching the new Geo, and then at the end, it's like, there you are supporting your family with your shop, and I was like. <gasps> Oh no! You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. I was like, "Fuck!" You know? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a cool, really it's a cool story. It's a cool story. It came out good, and man, I like it. Well, um, we might get a copyright strike, but Eric, do you want to? Do you want to show some of it? Yeah, it should be all right. We're, 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 everybody's all over the internet, so. <laughs> I don't know if it'll stream the sound or not. Let's see. Yeah, only one way to find out. If it doesn't, that'll actually save us from a copyright strike. Sure. So it opens up in Georgia. It, it's off. The volume is off. Yeah. Raise it up. Yeah. Nah, nah it's probably just going to let us talk. The documentary took 
over nine years for them to finish. So, so this right now, it's in the Georgia. Matthew retired. He was from South originally. And he wanted to retire, and he moved down to South to Georgia. So this is right now in Georgia. He's chilling and just like. That's Matthew right there. Yeah, that was my mentor. And he's he's current he's passed away, hasn't he? Correct, correct, correct. And uh, you know, I used to call him all the time. I had a chance to get old Brooklyn Locksmith. The shop is sold out, but Matthew was telling me, George, do your own thing. Like I listened to Matthew more than Tony, because Tony he was most like a businessman. Um, he never installed a cylinder in his life. He had like a 10 trucks at some point. He was one of the biggest company in Brooklyn, but they kind of died with the time yeah so i've posted the link to this video it's 30 minutes long yeah it's um, very short guys whenever you have time watch it it's pretty cool it's more than a locksmith and it's about so this is the shop yeah um, go ahead and pause that real quick um go back to that shop location uh the entrance real quick i want to ask you how big was the shop because very uh, small the so in a like the shop is that the end of the shop they had to make like two floors and they made it like tony was short so they made it like short for him i had to like dug down and go inside so it was like really like tiny place like like a hole in the wall <laughs> how much would the rent cost for a, lo a location so, like that? it was like 3600 and right now he wanted to raise it up if i were to take over this business uh i would probably pay like four thousand but you know i'm paying for my shop like three times than this so i would not even want it i didn't want to deal with it and matthew was like listen after i left the it's kind of went down you know it's old shop yeah. they didn't want to change nothing it was very old bro they didn't make no car keys it was very like old 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 yeah, if you look at the sign right here on the freeze frame, it says auto locks instead of auto keys. You know what I mean? So I, that caught my attention. I was like, I wonder what they mean by that, you know? <laughs> yeah, go, ahead, go ahead and play it a little bit more, Eric. Um, this, uh, I got to say, like this documentary, it's really good. It, it there's Look no at these phones. Look at these phones. Yeah. You know how old these phones are, bro? He had like seven lines. <laughs> Who's that? That's Al. He used to be a guy in the shop, used to cut keys and answer the phones. This is Tony, he used to answer the phones too. And Al used to cut keys, you know, you do reeking stuff, like a small stuff in the shop, you know? Yeah. And that's Tony. Tony, Tony no baloney. Yeah, Tony's funny. He's like, uh, one of the one of the quotes of the movie, he's like, discount, this is a lock shop. You have to go to the discount shop store for that. Yeah, and so I was many like, jokes, bro. I learned here. so much from these guys, you have no idea, man. Cool. Go ahead and skip down to like the halfway mark for me, Eric, if you can. Right there, right there, right there. When he's showing me how to install the door closer. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm young here, nine years younger. <laughs> See, that's what I tell noticed. I was looking. Count. Go ahead. So when it comes to discounts, tell him this don't count. This don't count. <laughs> he said a discount <laughs> store is across the street. <laughs> it's really cool. Like, uh, you showed. I believe it was the making of this movie, like probably yeah. five years ago is whenever I first saw it. You know, I got yeah. to see the cameraman and, uh, you know, them with their lights and, and stuff like that, their production equipment. And uh, I honestly never thought this was going to get finished. And it was just dropped like two or three months ago, right? Crazy, bro. I thought it yeah. was not because it was on hold and COVID did it. They put it on the shelf and it was like been so long. So right now I'm asking Matthew here. Matthew, if when you were like, would you do your life like different? Like, would it choose? Why did you choose like this career, like locksmithing? Why? Like, what made you choose? So here he's talking about how he had a problem with talking and reading because Matthew went to prison and he actually learned locksmithing in prison. And when he came out of the prison, he became a locksmith. But I don't think now they teach locksmithing in prisons anymore. You know, um, when Matthew was talking in this part, he said he basically found the best job for him at that time. And because uh, you asked him, you know, 
looking back, would you do, would you have done something different? Yeah. I think you were like, Matthew, should I invest myself into this? Correct. Like, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And he said, he said, for me, this was the best I could yes. do. So, you know, and I, I see it a lot in locksmithing. You get, you know, ex criminals, you get people who are just individuals, you know, they can't, can't be told what to do, you know, beat to their own <laughs> drum. You know, we have a bunch of crazy people in here. Listen, I'm sorry to cut you up. When I found no, out good. about locksmithing, you know, I had a lot of authority problems, people telling me what to do. Yeah. You understand? And when I found out in the locksmithing, as long as you do your job, nobody's going to tell you nothing. I was like, I want to be a locksmith. <laughs> when did you realize like you wanted to be a locksmith? Because in the documentary, they say that you came to them after. Yeah, Florida. before I was working for scammers in Florida and Texas. Yeah. I came back to Brooklyn, like to my hometown, kind of. Uh, I realized that when I was starting in Florida, I liked it. My friend was a locksmith. He used to tell me, he's like, listen, I'm a, I smoke joints from one job to another job. I'm by myself. They send me jobs. All I do, do the job, and that's it. I was like, oh, my God, it's so cool. I was like, hook me up. And yeah, he sign me, me up. up. Yeah. Sign me up for this. Sign me up. That's it. I liked it. And when I start working, I loved it even more, bro. And I love what I do. I love. I really love what I do. You've just started doing car keys a couple of years ago, right? Correct. Correct. So yeah. I, when I opened up my shop, you know, I used to tell Tony, Tony, let's start doing car keys. He had a AAA account. He had a car guys he used to pass jobs to, okay, for many years. Um, he had old machines, but new stuff he didn't have. I said, Tony, let's start doing it in the car. He didn't want to invest money. So when I opened up my own shop, I saw I was getting a lot of car keys. I was like, listen, and I was tired passing to technicians. I don't have a key. I'm busy. Uh, I'm going to be there in three hours. I have a couple of jobs to do. I said, you know what? I'm going to start doing it myself. <laughs> and yeah i'm not i'm not good with i mean i'm not like crazy with car keys but i, I can do a job you know I can... when you when it comes to car key programming would yeah, you agree bro. that it kind of matters who you know like your friends your tech 100%. advisors 100%. you know what i mean 100%. yeah like it's 100 percent hard just to jump into automotive and be able to figure this shit if out if you don't have nobody to call like two guys at least because somebody sometimes he's, he's busy he can't answer the phone if you don't have two three guys to call to help you out don't even start car keys yeah don't start what, what was your first programmer was it the ik820 uh no the first one i bought it was uh oh my god the sbb <laughs> the SBB like eight years ago, seven years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. when I opened up a shop, but I didn't use it. When I opened up a shop, Autech. I opened, I got an Autech. And man, Autech does a lot of cars. And then I got a X, X tool pad, something. And then when I got, start doing like little BMW, Mercedes, and stuff like this, I got an Autech. It's amazing. And I got a cold cannibal that I really don't use it because hotel is like, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. It's raining king right now. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. You and do. Like that small one. The small one does the same thing, bro. It's amazing. Which small one? The red one. The Q. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, what is it? K what? The K100. What K100. It's amazing. 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 And the keys, sure. the universal keys you can get, you know, it looks just like uh, aftermarket ones. It's not bad. I think how do you feel about Xbox. how do you feel about people calling us scammers whenever we use adaptables, like universal keys? Mm, get a life, man. Yeah. You know, I feel like we should be able to use any and all technology. There are some people that say the more Chinese or aftermarket technology you introduce to the market the lower you drop the market. You know what I mean? Listen, I get the job done. I come home. I feed my kids. I'm happy. I don't care what 
what I use. You know, who cares? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, see, here's here's JK. He hates the KM100, and he calls it the Auto Theft 100. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. They kind of, like, made it, like, really, like, the same tool. Like, and I don't know, like, in one. I don't know. <laughs> I agree. It makes it real easy for criminals. But uh, also, you know, it makes me a lot of money. Makes us a lot of money. Listen, the you know those Honda boys or what the Kia boys they call them? They've been stealing those Kia cars and going crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the problem. I think they should do like the fob system. At least like add a fob reader to a car to like I don't know. But I guess they're not gonna do it. That's a recall. They're like a you know recall. They're not gonna do that. I don't know what they can do. I mean, it's probably millions of cars that would have to be retrofitted. You know what I mean? So. Right. I bet yeah. they would just pay people money instead of, you know, refurbing every car, some kind of settlement. Um, you do anything that other people don't do. Like for me, I do antique padlocks, you know, really rare shit, 100-year-old padlocks. And, you know, I get these auto guys who are like, I can do cars you can't do, Jared, so I'm better than you. But I know that you come from a different background, so I'm wondering – is there okay, some so let me tell you, you know. something. I had a technician for two years, okay? For two years. I don't want to mention people's names. There's one guy here. He does car keys, and he's good. He's good with car keys. He takes the fans and ba ba ba. A little bit of EPROM. Yeah, he's better than me in the car keys. So my technician goes to do a job for him. He installs doorknobs upside down, a doorknob upside down my technician is like yo you know there's a tool you can take the doorknob off and flip it it's like one-on-one -on -one locksmithing and yeah he's, like, he's saying i'm a best in brooklyn he's like what you can flip the doorknob oh you're so, talking about a quick set right Where yeah 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 that little tool they you yeah. put it in ba -ba. yeah the release so, tool you yeah. don't know how to do that but you know how to do eprom and you're best locksmith in the world. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know shit. Yeah. You're not and, a locksmith. Yeah, the auto, a lot of auto guys will be like, oh, I'm the best there is. And I'm like, you can't no, do safes. Not. You can't do this. You can't do no, that. No. And it's like, eh, you know. I don't care you do Volvo. I don't care you do, uh, I don't care you do Volkswagen. I don't care you do Volvo. You know what? We're in America. There's more GM cars. There's more cars that I can make money for. And for me, let's say New York is a, you know, it's, it's I want to come in and out. Yeah. You know, if yeah. I start specializing in cars, I have to do only cars. In New York is a little different. Then you is gotta have a, a huge, huge van. And having a huge van in New York, you ain't finding no parking, bro. Mm, yeah. And I live in a college town full of parking garages. That's why I don't have a van. Yeah, you ain't going inside there. No, no, you can't do it. And so, yeah. What the fuck was I going to ask you? I had a question. Uh, what's a New York job that you see that I wouldn't? Do you guys have anything in particular? Like, I know you've probably seen doors with like five deadbolts on them, right? Have you ever had mm -hmm. one of them that's been all locked out where you have to open five deadbolts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I had one time to open four locks, and I was when I was telling him each price on each lock, he was <laughs> he was going crazy, and then he had like a covered plates on top of the locks, and he had a multi locks, and I didn't have a pixel back then, so a lot of guys they just drill him, they destroy. Yeah. Like in New York, you can make seven hundred dollars on the residential door, easy. Motor slot right now. I gotta do on Sunday. It's marks hundred twenty dollars. I'm selling it for three seventy five plus labor. It's like five twenty five. You cannot make five twenty five on uh, on a residential door in your town. There is no way. What kind of deadbolt you gonna put it in there? Mm -mm. Yeah, no. I'd have to hang a new door and everything to even get in that ballpark. You know you what see I mean? What I'm saying so. Yeah. Yes, we do have good. More better locks, more money. We can more. I think there's more money here. Even there's got, a lot of competition, and you can make more money here. 
you definitely have different opportunities. And speaking yes. of competition, do you have a lot of scammers in your area? Oh, my God. Oh, my Kimi is number one. <laughs> Go fucking figure. They called me when they came into the town. They're like, do you want to work with us? Um, I was interested. I'll be honest with you. They were giving me, like, good money. But now I see they're working with the scammers, and I told them I can't work with you guys no more because... First of all, they don't send me no jobs. They like when they just came, they wanted me to the jobs. They want to work only with local locksmiths. And then they start working with everybody, like a third party locksmith nationwide. That means it's a scammer. There's no nationwide locksmiths. There's no nationwide locksmiths. Even Papa Lock, even though they're nationwide, they're not nationwide. Right. They're franchisee and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah. they think they're working with they working with the scammers. They did a smart thing, Kimi. What they did is they, they they contacted me and everybody I know, and they hired the good guys first. They built up their credit rating on they Google. They fucked us. Yeah, they and then they over. they turned around and hired the cheapest guy, which is the scammer. You know, they called me today. They're, Can you do a job? How much? Eighty nine dollars. I'm like, what happened? You used to pay me one sixty nine for the car for the lockouts. You learned now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like more people have entered the game. Um, Eric, can you bring up that video real quick? I wanted to ask you, Gio, what do you guys? Oh, somebody's doing? commenting over there, guys. Hold on. There's a lot of comments there. I'm sorry. Here we go. We got one that says. George, have you ever been in any dangerous situations while working in New York? That's a great fucking question, actually. I'll be honest with you. In Florida, there's been a lot of crazy stuff, too. There's a lot of guns in Florida. Uh, but in New York, a lot of dead... Uh, I've been in situations like dead people in the apartment, like a bad smell when you open it. That's the worst, you know? Like cops behind you and you're trying to open the door. One time I drilled a cylinder... And as soon as from that little hole, the smell came in, I opened the door. There's like a dead body. I'm like, oh, my God. I stopped doing evictions. I don't do evictions no more. I live in a city where I have two daughters, where I go to the parks. I go to zoo. I don't want to run into somebody. They say, hey, this guy was there when I was getting evicted. They think we with them, but we yeah. not. But go and explain to somebody crazy in 2023 that you're not down with them. You're just a locksmith. So I, you know what? I have two kids. I, this is my own town. I'm living here. I'm not doing community. No, I don't give a shit. When they call me, I tell them I'm busy. Man, I, I don't turn that. down. I tell them I'm busy. I'm scared, bro. I have two kids. I want to come home. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I don't know. Invictions, if, you don't have, if I don't have a gun, I don't feel safe. I'm sorry. In New York, I can't have a gun. Yeah. So I'm not going to go to, hmm. I don't know. Invictions are dangerous, I think. And like two years ago, if you called me and say, George, I'm locked out and I'm in a, like, uh, a neighborhood where Mike Tyson is from, like a crazy ass neighborhood, some crazy people, let's say, right? Hmm. I don't go there no more because after COVID, New York became very dangerous. Like it changed in the last two years. I don't know how it's in your cities, but here it's bad. And it's that getting worse. Sketchy. Yeah, I don't know. It's getting bad in New York. I don't know in your cities, but in New York is it's it's bad, man. You used to be a judo champion, right? Uh yeah, New York State champion, yeah. And uh I took like third place in U.S. and Canada, and then my mother, she had a she uh, she had a cancer, and I dropped out of high school and stopped working, so uh, I stopped the judo. Maybe do you I have work. a do you have a high school diploma or anything like that? Yeah, here I have. I actually have a trophy here. It's so funny, from 1998, 99. Nice. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only yeah. thing I have left. Because <clears throat> I was, was taking fine. judo, I was taking judo lessons, and you, 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 you did the ultimate cock swing. You posted a championship photo of you, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I used to do that." And I was like, "Fuck oh, me. yeah, that was so yeah. old, man." I was like, "Look at that." 
yeah, yeah. Cool. It was a good time. We always used to travel to different cities, states, went to Canada. Bro, it's amazing. A sport life, it's amazing. You know, you travel and stuff. It's cool. But I find I had- a lot of the best locksmiths are competitive. You know, we're not just – we're not cool with just staying at one level. We're always looking for the next, you know, kind of goal to grab onto. You know what I mean? So it's like I- the best – the best of us have a hobby or something or a past where we were competing or we've had a troubled, I don't know, background that caused us to fend for ourselves. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of locksmith had like a lot of problems in their life. A lot of the ones that I met, I don't know about like the Israeli guys and new, there's a big wave of Russian guys. There's actually a big wave of guys from Georgia too right now in New York. I was the only locksmith from Georgia. There was nobody else. Today, it's at least like five or ten new guys. They called me. They're looking for jobs. Um, there's a lot of what happened was, you know, six million immigrants came into this country. So there's a lot of immigrants right now in the cities like New York, Miami, you know, California. There's a lot of immigrants. It's crazy, bro. It's, what's going on in Manhattan? It's scary. It's pretty. Is it because of uh, the Russian war or Ukrainian war? Or what's going? I don't on? know why they're letting these people in. I don't know. I mean, I'm an immigrant myself, but I don't know why they're letting these people in. Do they know who they are? Like, uh, there's so many young men, like a military type of men. Like, why? Where's the women? Where's the kids? Why this bunch of guys? It's a little weird, man. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Weird shit happening in in states. And the mayor is, like, messed up in the city. I don't know. It's getting worse. Are you a citizen? Yes, yes, yes. You went through the whole process, got your your citizenship and everything? Correct, yes. That's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It well, I had a funny. question. It was funny. It was a Chinese lady trying to give me a citizenship. She had like a bunch of flags, like in you, like the old red stuff and stuff. And I'm like, yo, like this Chinese lady gonna give me a citizenship? And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> You're like, am I getting American citizenship or Chinese? <laughs> I was like, can I have somebody American here? <laughs> it was weird, but oh know. shit! Look, he just went Trump on us, is what uh JK is saying. Who's that? Oh, uh, he's just some guy. Um, real quick, I wanted to ask you on um, this part of the the movie. You guys yeah. are taking an antique door and yes. you're putting it into the back. It's, of the it's a regular door in New York. It's all over the. It's antique, but it's all over the New York. It's so old, bro. So, did you guys put a new door in or what? Yes, yeah, we put a new door in. That we're taking okay. the old door out. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at that, and at that part of the movie, um, Matthew confides in you he says when you first came to the shop i told tony that george can do three-fourths of the work that i can do yes he said but knowing you now for a while he said they found the right man for the job and uh how did that make you feel so if you saw that moment i was quiet i didn't answer him i was supposed to say thank you matthew hug him or something thank you guys I was like shocked because to fit in into Matthew's shoes, like for me, it was a lot, bro. Like this guy had been doing it for 45 years and I got to take over his, like the guy who's been doing in Florida for two years. Like I can't compete. Like when I came into the shop, he took a motor slot. He dumped the fucking everything out of the motor slot. He's like, put it back. I'm like, I never even worked with motor slot in my life. He's like, you said you're a locksmith. <laughs> right i'm like oh shit and i was the, the the guy al who used to work i was like bro please help me I was like, <laughs> yeah because they uh, said when, yeah, they said when, when you came to the that, shop yeah. i was supposed to answer him but i was a little bit shocked that that the, actually he like i was like happy shocked that he's actually saying that yes i can do his work and I kind of was doing his work for like three years. I worked there for three years before I went on my own. Um, yeah, I did what he did, man. It was hard to fit in his shoes. Very hard. Yeah. Very hard. So you, you've you opened your own shop. Um, is it part of your house or is it actually a shop location? 
No, no, it's a shop location. It's actually like a garage. I turn into like a shop. It's double cars. I have a van inside, and then I have a shop outside. So it's like a, it's a nice little place. Uh, Tony was supposed to sell me the shop, and every year you he used to tell me I'm going to retire next year, George. Next year, George. Next year, George. And Matthew's like George. Tony was telling me this for 35 years. He's going <laughs> to retire and he's going to give me the show. Don't listen to him. I don't want to be no disrespect to Tony. He's somebody, if you hear it, I love Tony, but he said, do your thing, George. And um, I'm better off, I think, on my own. Yeah. He told you to build your own wings, essentially. Yeah. 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 That's good. I listen to him more because. Tony was more like a businessman. Matthew was like a, you see, I don't, I didn't really have like a father figure growing up. My, like, I come from single home. So Matthew was like, hell, I had like three, four girls back then. And I met my wife and he was like teaching me a lot of stuff. Not only locksmithing, like how to do the right thing. And I was listening. I took him as a, like a mentor, not only in locksmithing, in life. And I took a lot of advice from him. He was a really nice guy. He was he, he was really nice. That How long was, did you did you apprentice under Tony, or uh, not Tony and Matthew? Three months. Three months, and then on over on, on the phone, I used to call him Matthew. I'm stuck. I just put the door closer. The door doesn't close. It actually opens. <laughs> yeah. what, the, what did I do? He's like you put it the wrong way. You take the door down now and put it upside down. <laughs> shit like that how long were you talking to Tom or uh, matthew thereafter so you did you replace him three nine months years, nine years nine years nine years yeah, yeah damn so he was he was in your life for quite a while yeah 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 and before um, he died you you mentioned that he got to see the documentary yes we went together so to so like he showed the the guy who made a movie he showed us before anybody else like yes yeah, yeah. what is that what did he, he, he was laughing. He, he was laughing. We had a lot of good time. Um, he liked it. He was laughing the whole movie. He was laughing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he, he was, was pretty. He, he's a cool character or guy. You know, character for me in the in the movie, but a guy you know in real life. You know that I don't know. I thought he was really. He's very honest, and you know, yes, for a guy who claims to be like not a people person and closed off, he gives it to you straight, or he did. You know. Correct. And uh, kind of what I see in you, you two, I expected to butt heads. And there was one scene where he was like telling you something and you're like, why are yeah. you mad? And he's like, I'm not mad. You're like, you're mad. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, you're I knew he was mad. getting mad because, yeah. you know, he's, like I said, I was like new school. He's old school. And, you know, like little bump, you know, little. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, you it got that part. <laughs> It's a nice documentary. Every locksmith should watch it, I think. I think so, too. I think every locksmith uh, should give it a shot, take a look at it. It's a, it's, it's a really uh, – it just sums us up. It shows the old guy passing the torch to the new guy, you know? And the new guy being cocky and young, being like, I'm a locksmith, and the old guy being like, yeah, you're, you're about to fucking see. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's really cool. And – uh in one part, he said, when the old Brooklyn will uh, finish with you, you're going to be a real locksmith. And I'm like, okay, Matthew. <laughs> so old I mean, Brooklyn? Did. You said old Brooklyn? Yeah, that was the name of the company, old Brooklyn locksmith. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do you have any crazy stories about seeing any crimes or doing any crimes accidentally, helping people break into shit or some crazy new york story so i just recently filmed in another movie called avenue u avenue u is one of the avenues in um brooklyn uh there's a documentary not documentary the series called graves End. i don't know if you guys ever heard of it they and uh, it's about italian mafia so my shop is in the graves End. like Two blocks away, uh, Sammy the Bull had an office. 
uh, three blocks away, like uh, done something, had an office. Like it was all Italian mobsters there, the whole neighborhood. There's still few, and they just filmed a movie about new generation. Uh, and I'm breaking into a house. I'm a playing a dirty locksmith. Not dirty locksmith. A friend of mine comes to me and he's like, listen, we need to open this door. A friend of mine died and basically there's a lot of money there. So I go on the job with him. Um, Mickey Rourke is there. The guy from the Bronx tell, you know, that young kid from the Bronx tell, the one that fell in love with the black girl. Did you saw Bronx tell? It's been a while. I know who Mickey Rourke is. Yeah. So there's a lot of guys in there. So let's see, you know. Maybe that movie is going to be nice. That's going to be a nice commercial for my shop, too. They came to my shop because he pulls up next to my shop. I come out, I get in the car, and he takes me to the job. Uh, that was pretty cool. That was That's fucking neat. So yeah. you're going to be in a TV show where you break into some monster's yeah, yeah, yeah. house. I was thinking like about, like, uh, I was like, oh, my God, like, you know, Crooked Locksmith, is it going to look good? But it's a movie. It's not documentary. It's fake. So it's, it's people can't take it how they want to take it. I was like, whatever. I'll do it for commercial. So, did you ham it up? Did you actually use locksmithing tools or did you use like Yes. A, a so I told the guys, I was like, listen, every movie, every movie, it's a fake picking going on. Every movie that's out there, there's like, I was like, let's make it real. He wanted me to use the pumps. He's like, yo, I like the pumps. I seen your video with the pumps. It looks cool. I was like, let me use Lishi. So they actually made me use Lishi in the movie. And in the movie, you can hear a click and noise. Click, 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 and it opens up. So it's pretty cool. It's the I think one of the first movies that actually somebody really picked a lot. Because <laughs> you know those CSI movies, they come out, they're like, dit, 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 and it's like, the door is open. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorites is like NCIS where they took two yeah. tension wrenches. They took two tension wrenches and they did this and it, and it opened and I was like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> yeah, I told them, let's not do that because everybody's no. going to be laughing at us. Let's do something real. <laughs> It'd be cool if you convinced them to throw a multi-lock and a rotor pick on it. You know what I mean? I and told you know, them I wanted people. it, but they wanted a leashy. They watched my videos. They said we want leashy. We like the leashy. Like, what what, sh what movie or show is this? That you it's going to be called Evan New You. There's a lot of people in there. You know that girl Lala? I think uh, she's on MTV. She's going to be like a killer there. It's going to be a cool movie. It doesn't look like low budget, so we'll see. We'll see. They, so with the Keys to the City, um, they want to do some other stuff. I think they might turn into a reality show, and they want to do, like, other locksmiths too. You understand? Like, maybe you, maybe somebody else, or maybe somebody else. Like, they want to continue this, like, uh, I don't know. That's what I heard from the producers. So it might be like a continuing after. I think reality show as a locksmith would have been cool, man. We get into some crazy shit. There's a guy on the TikTok. He has a lot of people. I think like million people follow him. Uh, I have like 700. I have a lot too. Uh, 700,000. And um, he shows the whole process over lockouts, the car keys, like the whole process. And there's a lot of people watching him. A lot of people interesting. And you I see that Italian guy who uh No, makes, he's like, an Israeli. He's an Israeli. No, no, no. Have you seen the Italian guy who makes like the keys to the, the old safes and stuff? He uh I know you you watch Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about, Bush. With something yeah. right, Bush something like Italian That's a, dude. Bro, yeah, this that's guy is amazing, bro. Yeah, that's like a master it. fucking locksmith right there. You know, bro, what I mean? these European locksmiths, they're on the yeah. next level, bro. Mm -hmm. We American locksmiths, we have nothing compared to those guys. I'm telling you. We have technology. Those guys have the time, the past, and all that other shit. Like, they have mechanisms that we don't even know. Like, you know, I wear one on my necklace called the Chubb yeah. Ava. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. We, we, any American locksmith isn't going to know what the fuck to do with okay. that. You know what I mean? No. Period. No. And so 
I absolutely love European locks. Did you ever get into lock picking culture? So look at this. This is for oh, empty. Because hear me out, Gio. Speaking of reality TV and such, I believe that lock picking is something that's going to become hot. I think they're going to start following us with lock picking competitions and shit like that. So <laughs> I come up to you come up to a lockout. Imagine this is fucking. I can't even. I don't know. Like a stuff like this, bolts coming out. This is like imagine you coming to a lockout, and this is what you see. You're like, what the fuck? I'm gonna do. How I'm gonna open this now? And yeah, I don't like, even know. What bolts is that? coming out. I drilled the bolts out, you know, pushed it inside. I opened it, you know, used common sense. But in New York, we have so many locks. Sometimes I come up to them, I'm like, what is this? Italians, Spanish, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's, we have these people, they do European doors, locks up, down. Bro, it's like crazy. You see? Why in Europe the locks are much better than here? Why? Because in the United We're States, cheap. we have guns. We ah. have guns. That's my opinion. From a person who lived in Europe, in my door, it's crazy in my house, bro. Like, it's crazy. It's made out of, like, I don't know, you need a tank to get inside. But I'm telling you, in, New York, in America, we have guns. They don't have guns like that in Europe. And in Europe, there's a lot of burglars. They rob people's houses. Here, we have home invasions. People come in. They break the door. Give me all everything you got. That's the American thing. How many times you heard somebody actually pick the lock and they got somewhere quietly, took their furniture or their TV and left? You never hear that in America. You hear it? Home invasion, bunch of guys with the guns. Give me everything you got. In Europe, they break into. That's why they have these old high security doors. That's it. As simple as that. It's different. I've never, I've it's never thought about that. That's what it I is. Think, I'm telling you. I think you're right, dude. Like I've never thought about that. I've seen what? in your, your in your area, you get multi point locking systems a lot. A you lot. Know? You watch my yeah. videos on Instagram a lot. All over the yeah. place. Very rarely do I see. I, I only see multi-point locking systems on the richest houses. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking, and this is going to be funny to you, like a five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars house will have like eight bedrooms here. Eric's location, that ain't shit, right? No, no not really. That's a normal house. Here you get yeah. a, you get a, like a two-bedroom apartment for five hundred thousand, bro. I can't even afford yeah. the house here. If I want hey, to buy a house, I have to put down like three hundred thousand dollars. Like the house that I'm living right now costs like almost two million dollars, bro. And it's what old is, as fuck. Your house right now is like two million dollars. Yeah, it's not my house. You I'm rent? Re I rent. Yeah. Yeah. I pay like twenty five. This house that I'm in was five hundred thousand dollars. You rent it or you bought it? I'm renting right now. So but the guy, Joshua, the guy I'm renting from, he just bought it. He ooh, just bought it this year. You see this pick tool? 540000 That's you a lever lock pick yeah, tool? because I run into like the stuff like this here, you know? And this is like European stuff, you know? Real, you know, if American locks will come to the door, you don't know what to do. Right. And that's what I was saying earlier. I uh, I've made keys to locks, lever locks. I know how to impression those. And um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's only hard. because I sought that shit out. You know what I mean? Uh, locally, I've never ever encountered anything like that. But what about if you start selling them like that in there? Would you think people would buy? No, right? Like I don't not understand. Either. Like how come it's not popular? How come in New York they spend? 350 for multi lock deadbolt and not in other states. How come you said you said it? Uh, I, I'm in Missouri. We guns. have like this, huh? huh? You said it, guns. 
Yeah, yeah, guns. You said yeah. it like in, in Missouri. I, we have the second loosest gun laws. I think behind like Alaska or some shit. Uh, we don't need a permit to conceal carry or anything. If you can constitutionally own the firearm, you can constitutionally conceal it on your body. So, I mean, we have super loose laws. I'm a felon, so I don't have a gun. So my okay. locks are, you know, really fucking good. And <laughs> I, listen to me, though. I honestly believe that you're onto something because there's a lot of tension in the United States about gun rights and shit. And to the locksmiths out there who are always saying you, you can't get you can't get what you're, you you deserve, perhaps you know Geo. If you don't have a gun, you should have a good fucking lock. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have I have a MT5 on my front door, and downstairs I have I because when I moved in that had Schlag, I changed everything to MT5. Um, that's it. You know, if they're gonna try to pick it. Good luck. You know, they're going to have to make noise. They can't bump it. You know, and they got to... Uh, in New York, you got to get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, yeah. I think 50 Cent said it, so don't, if you're scared, go get a dog or something. <laughs> JK says, I'm in Tennessee. They give you a gun at birth. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. New York Jesus is Christ. messed up. Oh, what go. about in LA? Somebody say LA the state anti guns. Yeah, you see in LA and they have all these gangs and you can't even have a gun. I saw a guy in Miami, he blocked me because I said, Yo, why you need to have a M16 in the back of your car? Like, are you going to a war? He's actually like a, it was Israeli, but he was trying to be like Americanized, like whatever. Um he's trying so too hard. Yeah, yeah, like I'm like, why you need a gun? I mean, uh, like I'm in New York, I'm in a dangerous city, and I don't need a gun. Like, why you need it? Like, are you going to war? Yes, it's good, but I don't know. I don't know. I have a knife, and that's it. God forbid something happens. I mean, what's gonna happen? They're gonna rob you. They can take everything if they want. I have insurance. Yeah, I got cornered in a in a dude's fucking garage you did? once. Oh yeah, you yeah, scared the shit out of me. And you know, I don't carry. And uh, basically, I had to what the police called placate, which means just put him off and don't don't escalate. You know what I mean? And it was fucking was that the scary. Volkswagen? Huh? Was that the Volkswagen? Mm -mm. It was a it was a Honda Ignition rebuild, and the car obviously I couldn't see if it started before I did the work because the ignition wouldn't turn. And so I took it all apart. Uh, I did the repair, put it back together. And when I turned the key, there was no power to anything. And uh, I was like, oh, oh I'm going to go ask the guy. So I walked in, you know, out of the garage, knocked on his door. and was like, hey, does your car start? And he was like, what the fuck you mean? Instantly. And I was like, uh oh, that's weird. And so I was like, hey, just come with me real quick. And so we walked out of his house into the garage and I was like, see, and I turned the key and he's freaking out zero to 11 instantaneously had me cornered and uh, uh it was really fucked up he was standing like this like he was gonna cock back on me like like what the fuck man like that i was like <laughs> <laughs> i was like what the fuck is going on here you know what i mean and uh you know people are fucking insane i wish i could carry it I'm, i mean me too because right now i have two kids and before I really didn't care about guns, but now that I have two kids and I want to come home to my babies, you know, I am the I, I wish I think I can get a gun in New York into the shop. What the fuck I'm gonna do in the shop with the gun? Yeah, it's more when you go to a job, you know. I don't leave home without it. Huh? Yeah, Eric. Eric. Carries. I don't leave home without my gun. One of my guns. I wish I was Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why i started you know kind of getting in shape and shit because i was like correct you know, i don't want to i don't want to fucking die correct over some stupid bullshit i want to you know, at least be able to, to run away you know what i mean did you guys heard like last year somebody in miami got shot or something like locksmith oh. how we can oh, get yeah. to them? how we can uh, get to that that somebody like i don't understand it had to be an argument probably right it can't just like Give me everything. Okay, then give it to him, right? Yeah. What's the point fighting? What is, does it work or whatever you have? 
Give it to him. You have $200 cash from the other job? Give it to him. I agree. Tell him he's the kiss for my van. Leave. If you want to take my car, yeah. too. <laughs> I agree. Um, I think it was... Uh, for customer to shoot me, I have to do something bad. I don't know. Maybe he's crazy. But if it's crazy, I think I can tell by the phone if it's crazy. I won't go there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I don't know. They it's like, you know, you get tools. you get a fucking yeah, gut feeling over time. Yeah, they can take tools. You know, I would tool somebody who said they steal tools. Yeah, in Atlanta, got killed somebody. Yeah, in Miami. I don't know, guys. It's not worth it. They want the tools, they can take the tools. Pay $70 a month for insurance. Eric, what is that? Is it, I think this is the one he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, a man has been arrested in connection with the fatal shooting of a locksmith he hired at his southwest Miami-Dade home. Yeah, yeah, this uh, is Second-degree murder and burglary charges. Yeah, this is Yeah. So right. burglary charges means that he hired the locksmith, you know, as to a... To break into something. Maybe yeah. somebody came out and started shooting from inside. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I think him. I think he robbed he robbed the locksmith. Oh, he robbed the locksmith. Uh, what a dick! Yeah, yeah. Is this him? is the guy, Spanish guy. Yeah, I I donated like fifty or hundred dollars on his family. It sucks, bro. Yeah, I remember donating money on his family. Then it sucked. Yeah, that's always been the pretty, scariest fucking part. Straight. Is like. Yeah. The public, you know, I tell people all the time, I love the work, I hate the people, you know? You yeah. got to watch out, man. You know, we, we got to be smart, guys. We, if you see something not right, just turn around. It's not worth it. Don't get mad even that you wasted the 30-minute drive. If you smoke, spark it up and go move on. If you don't mm -hmm. smoke, I don't know. Go get beer when you get home. Uh, yeah. Trust it's your gut. not worth it. It's part of the business. You know, for the new, like, I used to get mad, bro. I used to get mad at customers. I don't. Even if a locksmith pulls up and he pulled up before me, I don't even argue. You know what? He came there before me. Even if the customer did call me and him, what's the point argument? I feel it. I don't know because it happens. It happens a lot. I think it happens. Customers call a couple of people. Like this guy was calling. I have a group. It goes NYC jobs. I put all the locksmiths in New York City. Not all the ones that I know. I've been adding people. Got like hundred people locally. So if like somebody just posts a job, he called three people. He's like, "Yo, I'm going over there." No, I already got that job too. So that's kind of cool too. In your own community, if you can bring local shops together, have a group on the WhatsApp and communicate with each other. So, like, you know, oh, this guy's trying to break into the house. He don't have a paperwork. Don't waste your time. We do this shit all the time. I created that group, like small group, only locksmiths in New York City, and they help us out a lot. That's a good that's fucking idea. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good idea. Even that's though a lot idea. of guys hate each other in that group, whatever. It's part of the business. Listen, there's a few guys, they are like, you know, kind of my competition, but we help each other out. It's better to try to eat together than eat each other. I don't know. That's how I think. Yeah, so, locally. Tony, locally, I'm yeah. sorry, before I forget, Tony used to tell me, George, now it's illegal. Back then, it was only four locksmith shops in Brooklyn. We used to have a dinner. We used to sit down. And we used to say, hey, it's $65 for car lockout. We all charge $65. When a customer calls to Jared, Jared says $65. Calls Eric, $65. Call George, $65. He just picks what it's like. So they had like one price. Everybody was eating good. You know what I'm saying? They charge what they wanted to charge. But right now, it's probably even illegal to do it, you know. And most of the guys, half of the guys, they're going to use that. And like, oh, they're charging 65. We're going to charge 55. You know, it's a lot of snakes now. Back yeah. then, it was different. It was 70s, 80s. They were old timers. They had respect. There's no respect no more. 
that's what happened locally is uh, when I started, I called every locksmith in town and introduced myself and told them I wanted auto and I would trade jobs. You know, I'd give you commercial, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I tried to set rates, you know, with people. And then they would be like, yeah, Jareth, we're doing it. We're setting rates. And then I would learn that, you know, Brandon would quote 225 my rate, but he'd offer two keys instead of just one key like me. You know what I mean? And so he would uh, he would effectively steal the customer because they're getting twice the value all of a sudden. And he knows my rate. You know what I mean? So I really like your little WhatsApp idea. That's kind of it sounds like building a local association you know Correct. amongst your group you know instead Correct. of putting an association out there like the old style the whatsapp group is kind of the new style of a of an association Correct. and it's immediate and i really like it i'm gonna and i'm gonna introduce the idea to the old guys that i like because they they'll be like jared i don't have a g key to a honda do you have one sure you know that they can post that like right now i post yeah. it hey guys anybody close to the job because this guy is calling around. Yeah, he called me. He called me. All right, I'm close by. All right, so why don't you go? He, he's out there with the daughter. He's trying to get somebody quick. He's calling 20 locksmiths. Like, I don't know. Oh, That's you have the key? I, you have a key? Yeah, I have a customer. He just came to the shop. He wants a Honda key, but I don't have with the trunk button. I have only with the two buttons. Do you have with the three buttons? Yeah, I'm sending customer to you. We're not losing the customer. Then you do that same thing to me. You throw jobs at me. I mean, if you don't throw jobs at me, I'm not going to send it to them. I'm going to be like, okay, give me at least $20 for me sending the customer. Yeah. So I, it works out both ways. I think it's, I want to actually make like business cards and like with a link and go into more local shops and give it to more local guys to try to bring it in more. It's kind of like associations. What that's what actually, I think other locksmiths thinking about doing it with their groups on the Facebook. I think that that's that's their strategy. I think to make that a legitimate association at some point. Do you go to conventions or anything like that? Yeah, more local to Yankee Convention. It's in the Boston, close to Boston. I go there because just like to drive, you know, like four hours you know it's hard for me to go to orlando i don't know i'm a one-man show you know i don't know yeah it's, it's kind of hard to leave right now i'm going away like for a week with the family but i'm going to transfer the form to somebody and it's hard to trust people too you know i don't know so take this yeah. um the tla and us we were kind of working on an idea sometimes people it's hard for them to go to a convention because they're like us, one man show, new or whatever. So I kind of had the idea of a like a tuition where people can donate to an account. And then every year we find a candidate who is flown, offered education and perhaps given some money so that they can cushion the expenses, you know, incurred during the trip. What mm -hmm. do you think about that? That's pretty cool, but how many people actually would pay? That's the question. I think if we build it, they will come. Because in, in our industry, you know, like your documentary, there's not a lot of involvement with the public. And like your documentary kind of opens the door to the public of what a fucking real locksmith is, right? Not your Israeli scammer showing up and threatening them with a screwdriver, you know? Yeah. No, it's it's a problem solver. It's deeply rooted, you know, family business. You know, it's cultured, and uh, I think if the more we try to initiate the change, I think the more we can. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. We're trying to fucking get a new association, one that actually does things for people, and uh, I don't know. I don't think because I call you were talking about. I think one of the videos about the tables, so I called in. Uh, Yankee convention, and I'm like, I want a table for the auto pick tool. You know, I was thinking about getting a table, bring the tools, the lock, and show it to people. Bro, well, they're like seven thousand dollars for a table. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. And your table's gonna be this big, you know what I'm I mean? Like, what seven thousand? Yeah. I said, I don't even have seven thousand worth of equipment. And I was like, what are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it, it, like they <laughs> shit. They charge people thirty thousand dollars for their space, and it's That's like, uh, how, do, how do you compete with that? You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I, these guys who go there, uh, they waste money too. To be honest with you, they don't sell that in that amount of stuff. You want to hear a complaint of mine? Yeah, I cool. hate whenever you go to a class and it's like Jaguar programming or Volkswagen programming and all they want to show you is OEM tools. And you're like, I don't that's, even have that. That's like that scam though. They do the class and then they try to sell you the tool. Yeah. Like, a, you know, I'm not, I'm not throwing people under the bus like a Britis. You know, I know many people have gone to classes and they're just like, you know, a Breedis will have to wait for a calculation for hours, whereas I would EEPROM it. You know what I mean? So, this so is, like, it's this, ridiculous. There's a tool called Phoenix. It opens up of safes. Yeah. You probably heard about it. Mm -hmm. The guy disappeared who makes it, who sells it. What? People calling me from Russia. They're like, listen, we can't get in touch with this guy. This guy disappeared. And he sell like two, three thousand dollar tool. People can't even get upgrades. I didn't know that. Yeah. He, I, that took like the his, hottest. I took his class. I took a class about that tool. I was going to buy it. Thanks God I didn't buy it because he disappeared. Crazy. Hmm. Well, we're coming up on an hour and 20. I think we're probably going to conclude this here shortly. What time is it where you're at right now? It's coming on a... Oh, it's 11, uh, 17, and I got to watch the UFC, the last fight at least. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> real yeah, quick yeah. before we I go... I got more important shit to do, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I got real quick before... Procedure. We should do this again, guys. We can bring in yeah. more people. You got to bring in more people. I got to talk to more people, man. We got we to gotta squash some beef, old beef. Maybe. All right. I'm game. So yeah, actually that was an Wayne, idea. If Wayne, you know, here watches it, Wayne, we gotta talk, man. We grown people. Mm. I think Paul too. We used to be friends. Something happened. Paul disappeared too. He's a nice guy too, you know. Things happen, stupid stuff in groups, but we grown man. We should not be arguing about stupid stuff. All right, and conversely, you have some friends of yours that I believe I have some issues with. So yeah. we could do a round table. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, it's all stupid to fight each other. We're real yeah. locksmiths. There's out there scammers that we should fight them, not each other. You know. I want to be honest with you. I'm ready yeah. to put that shit aside because, like, I want to be friends with half of these motherfuckers, but then I see them at the show, and I'm like, we still have old shit that we got to squash. You know what I mean? Did they say hi so, to you? Some do. Some of these motherfuckers don't even like do pass by. I'm like, yo, are you talking all that shit? At least like say what's up now. Let's talk now. Not like to fight or anything, but just like man to man. Let's talk. Dude. Um, I'm not I here to fight. I got two kids. I don't want to go to jail to fight in another locks, but another state it doesn't make sense. I agree. I mean, I, I confronted one of them and uh, he literally said to me, I, like we walked outside and I was like, you have something to say to me. And he said, what right do you have to make a YouTube video? And I was like, uh, yeah, I, come on, guys. I expected a good, valid complaint. Like, I was like, everybody has a right. You, them, everybody, you know? Like, come on, man. Give Listen, me something it helps here. out your business. Those yeah. videos helps out your business. You make money like that. If it yeah. wasn't for videos, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So I it taught helps myself. Me out. It yeah. fits my family. Leave me alone. Yeah. I want to do yeah. what I want to do. They don't like that you show them how to program this and this. Why? The person's going to buy all the equipment and do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to find my pack-a-punch cutter that's no longer made. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. I'm ready. I'm ready to put this shit aside. Let's all, you know, come together and fucking, you know, yeah. actually make make the proper changes. You know what I mean? Quick, right. I'm gonna quit calling you a bitch. You quit calling me a bitch, and let's focus yeah. on the haters of the industry, which are the scammers. They hate yeah. us. We shouldn't hate each other. You know what I'm saying? So like, yes. like let's do it, Geo. Let's let's do, let's do it. Let's, do. let's, let's get them it. together. All right. Okay, guys. That'll be an interesting fucking podcast right there. So. All right. Well, guys. I appreciate Very having nice you. To you. One love from Brooklyn. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> Have a good one. Take care, guys.
That was pretty interesting, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I like him. He's an interesting dude. He's a character for sure. That's why I believe he uh, people are drawn to him, and he gets to be put in movies a lot or on yeah. film. So I'm all riled up, Eric. I'm all worked up. <laughs> Uh, I agree with him on a lot of a lot of things. Uh, the associations are old. I've been saying this. You've been saying it. We've been seeing it. And um, yeah. Yeah. I fucking love I love his idea of WhatsApp groups amongst local people, even competitors. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this person didn't have a title. Crackhead wasted my time. Don't you know, avoid. I think that would benefit a lot of different groups of people in our industry. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I got undercut by 10 bucks today. <laughs> yeah. And it's like a, by a, friend of, around, by a friend of mine. He didn't even like, he just flat didn't realize. It's like I said, locally, <clears throat> they'll quote the same price as me. I'll quote for one key and then they'll be like, I'll give you two. And it instantly, you know, sways a customer. So it really yeah. pisses me off. Man, I'm all worked up. I, I like the fact that his WhatsApp group, to me, essentially, that starts, that's like the building block of a community. And what a community can build is a good association, you know? And if you put together the right people, even the wrong people, eventually you can kind of form them into something that's pretty damn, you know, handy. And useful. Yeah. And I so, like uh, the idea of everybody being able to talk about the uh, customers themselves, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, they have they have a, a way to review us. They can go to our fucking Google page and they can say anything they want to fucking trash us. Uh, but, we, you know, we don't have a review system for customers. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if we're all in the same group and, hey, this guy, his fucking phone number called, said he need a lockout, showed up. He wasn't fucking there, won't answer his phone. Now they know they can just write that guy off, you know? Yeah, threaten me with a screwdriver or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, you know, then everybody else in town can know. So to the smarter people or the people that have more time, here's what I see. You get a bunch of little groups of people. Like Geo has his group in New York. I'm going to build one in uh, Columbia. You find some way to interlink those groups. You know, you got you got 10,000 little pockets of people talking and they all have locksmithing in common. Unite them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you unite them, you suddenly build the biggest association. You know, in our industry. So. TLA, whomever, someone smarter than me, uh, figure that shit out, because I think that's how you get it done. You know, Aloha is still old school email pushers and, you know, mail brochures and shit like that so yeah. i really see that there is a pathway to something here um yeah and in regards to fucking associations man like if we all band together you know the scammers that's all they have is that they're temporary you know what i mean yeah is that they pop up and they can disappear yeah. no scam shop will have been a staple of a community for 20 years. Am I wrong? No, no, absolutely right. So if you can band people together who are stapled in the community, then I think it would be a lot easier to show the public who not to hire. I don't know. I see something here. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, brother. Yeah, that would, actually, that would be pretty cool, too, to advertise that, like, hey, this group of locksmiths that you know are all in your town they're all competitors they're all band together you know what i mean yeah. these guys are all i don't know verified certified whatever you want to fucking call them but something that says like hey these all 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 these guys are kind of clumped together as legitimate locksmiths these other businesses out here you know fuck them yeah perhaps even offer an avenue to where the customer doesn't contact the locksmith individually but the group you know what i mean i don't know yeah i yeah. really don't know there's something there i think it's very interesting yeah. i like his idea too of uh with the whatsapp of 
you know, with lockouts and stuff, especially in a place like where I live, um, our our county is 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 fucking huge, man. Like, I mean, you know, like sometimes I can drive an hour from Fredericksburg to Fredericksburg. Yeah. So you know, you get a lockout, and you can throw that into the group. Hey, who the hell is closest to this address? You know. Yeah, I have a lot of nice. rural farmland and like little cities all over, yeah. and I'll have to drive like thirty-five miles to get to a house, and. That's why I don't like doing residential anymore is because it, it, it'll take me 45 minutes to drive to the address. And in that time, you got, you know, Hillbilly McGee over here prying at his door with anything he can grab. And uh, I'll right. get 30 minutes into a trip and you've you've been on the phone. I'll be like, fuck, here they go. They're calling. They're going to cancel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 30 seconds later, I'm like, yep, I'm turning around. Yeah. They wasted my time again. So. Yeah, it pisses that, me I, off. You know, I was lucky. I was I was late this morning getting up and, and moving around because that guy that guy that canceled on me this morning to say he found his keys last night, you know, that job was like a fucking hour away. And you know, he canceled on me like 20 minutes after I was actually supposed to be there. So didn't the locksmith you know, fail on that job before you? He passed it on to me. Actually, it's locksmith Jeremy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He didn't fail. He just passed it on to me because he he knew he wasn't gonna be able to e-prom it. Um, so he passed it on to me, and like I said, I scheduled with the guy for today, and um, he, the you know instead of uh texting me last night or contacting me last night, I, you know, mm. I shit's on twenty four seven. I'm not gonna get upset if you text me at two in the morning and say, hey, I need to cancel my appointment tomorrow. But I would have been upset had I got there. And then he was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I found it. Yeah, definitely. And that so just goes to prove that. Was, fortunately, I was running late. <laughs> yeah. It just goes to show that your networking, you know, pays off in the end. Local guy, yeah. locksmith Jeremy, yeah. said, hey, it's a job I don't want, can't do, et cetera. You know, take it, take it from me. I think we need more of that. Well, we are at a hour and 30 minutes at locksmith late and i'm feeling tired and uh i also kind of want to watch the ufc fight so we're gonna call it <laughs> I <wanna laughs> we're gonna call it cleaning this room and getting things together I was working on my network and get my uh new speakers and everything set up so i got kind of a big ass mess in here yeah a little hard to see on camera but right there to my left there's a fucking stack of boxes and right here on the floor is another stack of boxes <laughs> Yeah, a mountain of shit to do. Mm -hmm. Well, brother, love you as always. And uh, everybody who tuned in, we will be back Saturday. So um, I don't know who we have next Saturday. I think we might have Philip Stout coming on, who is with Elite Key Solutions, if I'm not wrong or right. I don't know. I don't know much about Philip Stout. He will be a fellow instructor at the TLA. This coming uh, October, I believe Philip is going to be teaching European and Mercedes. If he's not teaching Mercedes, he's going to be teaching Volkswagen and BMW. Um, and he also does roller derby. So we're going to investigate that. <laughs> yeah. That's his nickname, roller derby, apparently. Yeah, so, I remember Amanda saying that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Eric, love you again. And uh, until next time. We'll holler at you later.